Our sketch today is of the original Point Loma Lighthouse. It provided a welcoming beacon of light that guided sea captains for 36 years. And that's a relatively short time for a lighthouse, especially considering the oldest active lighthouse in the United States was built in 1764. That's 258 years ago. This historic lighthouse is located on the Point Loma Peninsula at the mouth of San Diego Bay. It's situated in the Cabrillo National Monument. And while it's no longer in operation as a lighthouse, but it is open to the public as a museum. It was built in 1855 by the United States government in September 28, 1850, just 19 days after admitting California to the Union, Congress appropriated $90,000 to construct lighthouses along the California coast. Construction was begun in 1854. It was finally completed over a year later. At dusk on November 15, 1855, the lighthouse keeper climbed the winding stairs and lit the light for the first time. The lighthouse was built in the Cape Cod style, as were most of the original West Coast lighthouses. The exterior was local sandstone and left unpainted. Because sandstone is fairly soft, the weather started to erode its surface, and within 15 years, it needed to be coated in cement mortar and painted, which is how we see it now. It had a rolled tin roof painted red, a brick tower, and an iron and brass glass housing for the light centered on top. You entered the house and immediately see a narrow circular staircase that takes you up to the watch room, which was basically a landing with a window and a step ladder. That ladder took you to the lantern room above where all the action happened. There was the lantern with its massive five foot tall Fresnel third order lens, a curious thing of beauty described as a huge round glass beehive. The Fresnel lens developed in France and shipped over from Paris was a new development in lighthouse lantern design and then it allowed incredible intensification of the light from an oil lamp. The lamp oil was rapeseed, lard, or kerosene, though some sources say it was whale oil. For 36 years, the lighthouse keeper would keep watch night after night, making sure the light stayed lit and looking out for ships on the horizon. The keeper with his family occupied the lighthouse itself, which featured a basement, ground floor parlor, an all-purpose room, and two cramped bedrooms midway up the tower. The longest serving lighthouse keeper was Robert Decatur Israel, who had been keeper at the lighthouse for over 18 years before it closed. While in operation, the Old Point Loma Lighthouse had the highest elevation of any lighthouse in the United States. However, the location on top of a 400 foot cliff meant that fog and low clouds often obscured the light from the view of ships. On foggy nights, the lighthouse keeper would sometimes discharge a shotgun to warn away ships. Well, and then finally on March 23rd, 1891, the flame was permanently extinguished and the light was replaced by the new Point Loma Lighthouse at a lower elevation. Ultimately, the lighthouse was abandoned and allowed to deteriorate until 1913 when President Woodrow Wilson dedicated the lighthouse and surrounding land to become the Cabrillo National Monument. In 1935, the lighthouse went through a major renovation and today the Old Point Loma Lighthouse still stands watch over San Diego, an honorable sentinel to a vanished past. The Cabrillo National Monument is really worth the trip as there's so much more to see than just the historic lighthouse. For one thing, the views from the area at over 400 feet above sea level provides unobstructed 360 degree views from, of San Diego and the Pacific Ocean. There are so many great vantage points around this charming building to stand or sit and sketch. And it doesn't take long to capture the essence and charm. I love seeing it from the winding path leading up to the lighthouse. You get both the lighthouse itself and the caretaker's cottage next to it. But let's get started. Let's first block out the sketch in pencil, holding it loosely. I would like us to start with the face of the building. It's identifiable as a simple rectangle. You'll notice that there's a little bit of perspective on this, but we're going to ignore it for a moment while we while we block out 
the lighthouse portion itself. Then we're going to do the assistance quarters. So starting somewhere around in the middle of your page, and you're going to be able to dictate how big your drawing gets. Draw a rectangle that is twice as wide as it is tall. And one easy way to do that is if you can eyeball drawing a square and draw a second square beside it. Then we're going to block out the roof and the, the trick is we're um, looking for ways of simplifying it. When I look at um, a, a building that I want to sketch, I start to break it down into pieces. There's a rectangle. There's another rectangle that looks like it's about half as tall as the original rectangle. And so I'll put that in another rectangle that's about half as tall. That's what it looks like to me. But it's not a rectangle, is it? It's got angled sides. So let's put two little angled sides. And if you don't trust your eye, you can try holding your pencil up to match that angle. Try to carry it over and see I could make this a little more slanted. And that side's a little less slanted. The next thing, let's get this side. This side is foreshortened. We're seeing we're seeing a side of it. We're not looking at the face of it. Like this, we're seeing it almost true to scale. But this side, it's very squished. It's very foreshortened. So I mention that because these things, we tend to draw them wider than we should. But try not to. Try to keep it skinny. So you draw a little rectangle over there. Now how do you how do you double check that you've got your proportions um good? It should be about half again. It should be about a, a fourth of the width of the whole rectangle, or if you had broken it into two squares, you break it into another square again. That that size should about mimic that size. Okay. And then, I don't know if you can tell, but that back slope comes down a little farther than the one in the front. So if you can do that. Let's erase some of our lines in the front here so that it doesn't confuse us. So we have our simple little, our simple little Cape Cod style Let's put, come to the line that you have made on the roof and see if you can find the center of it. Just draw a line straight up. So this is about broken into three equal pieces. So if you can, make two tick marks on either side of your straight up line and make a little square up there. Not too tall. Uh, so we should be, so what, what, what we're trying to grab is a square that's, or a rectangle that's sitting on top of that roof like that. And you're going to say, but it's not a rectangle and it's not a cube, it's circular. And so we're going to take this little rectangle and we're going to make it have a circular bottom. So at the bottom, just give it a gentle little smile, a little curve at the top. Go the other direction with a very gentle curve. Now let's put that walkway around. So you'll just draw another little curve there and a little taller curve on top. And it wants to be a little wider than this brick base. Looks like it's got a little hat on it. Actually, got some little ears that go around the other side. Then, where the lantern itself is, these glass windows, we're gonna, they're not as wide as the brick base. So, you can continue that brick line up, but once you get above the railing, come in a little bit. It's sort of a square up there, so you can make a square, but then put a little rounded top on it. And these little curves are just gentle little curves. It doesn't take much to, to make these curved forms. 
Now that copper top is looks like it's in a series of panels. Make it like that. And then there's a ball on top of that. And can you see there's that little metal spire that's sitting on top. I wonder if that's a lightning rod. Should research that. So while we're here, there's a few details we could add. These windows are divided in half. You can sort of see that lens that's in there, but that's a detail we don't need to worry about. The scale of this drawing is a little too small for us to <laughs> try to get what that Fresnel lens looks like. So let's work our way back down and let's put this window in. This is in that there's that spiral stairway inside that form. But be careful, because the building faces to the left, be careful not to put your window right in the middle of this form. If you were to draw a vertical line right through this form, you'll see that window is to the left of center. So our line is still showing. Put your window off to the side. The bottom of the window aligns with that roof. All right, now's a good time for us to address the fact that the building is a little in perspective. That is, we're not looking at it straight on, we're at the side. So what I'd like you to do, is starting at the round tower, make that line slope down just a tiny bit. And then from the other side of it, make it slope up just a tiny bit. You see how I did that? And then when you come to the bottom of this roof, slope it up a little bit and then adjust where the roof hits. We just want to take what we originally made as level lines and give them a little bit of a slant. And what what's good is there's that little bit so this is this is where the horizontal line was and this is where your sloping line is. That's okay, That's there's like a little bitty roof eave there. How about we block in the doors and the windows? There's five, there's a door, two windows to the left, two windows to the right, and they're sort of evenly spaced. If we wanna find the center of this rectangle, draw an X through it from corner to corner. That's the center, that's the center of the door. So make a little rectangle and the top of the door is about in the center of that rectangle. You can make a horizontal line from the top of the door. And can you eyeball where the other two windows are going? You can do the same thing on the other side. If you need to erase and um, reposition your windows, now's a great time to do it. Now, how about the chimneys and that other window on the side? We're really seeing a, a taller rectangle, not very big there. And on the other end, you see that it's a tall rectangle, but again, not very big compared to everything else. So like a tiny little rectangle. Those are the chimneys. And then this window on the side, it's on, it's closer to us. It's not centered on that. You probably couldn't tell, but if you just wanted to put a, a couple little lines like that, that there's your window. Before we get to the fence here or any other details on this, let's draw the assistance orders. And one thing I've noticed is that even though this is more prominent and a bigger building, if you look carefully, the width of the house, the way our eye sees it, the width of the lighthouse is the same width of the other quarters. If you don't believe me, you hold your pencil up, use your finger end as a measuring device, and look at that. Okay, I admit, I checked it beforehand, but it looked to me like they were, this one has more importance, 
but this is low and wide, and it's just as wide as that. And so let's make a little tick mark to the left of the lighthouse, and then let's just do our little our measuring. No, actually, I need to do it with my right hand. So m measure the house lighthouse as you've drawn it, not the way the photo is, but as you've drawn it, and then mark off the left and the right sides. The few things we're going to take off of our original drawing. Where the bottom of the door is, wherever you've drawn the bottom of your door, the, the bottom of that original rectangle is the bottom of the door. And if you just draw a straight line across, because what I'm doing here is I'm taking what we've drawn, comparing it to what we haven't drawn, and seeing what relationships there are. I see there's a relationship between the bottom of the building and then the bottom of this part of the second building that we can see above the fence. So that really helps us. So we draw that line. Now how about the top of that? Looks like the bottom of the windows and the eave there are about the same. So if you can make a line across there. Okay, now the next challenge is how wide is this side that's in the shadow compared to this side that's in the light? Sure looks like it's a 50-50 mix to me. Oh, good enough. So divide it in half. Now just because the peak of that roof looks like it's in the middle, we might want to just double check. Yeah, we're going to say it's in the middle. So how does the peak of this roof relate back to what we first drew? So you can see the peak of the roof is about, it's just a tiny bit above the eave. So over like that. And then we're going to, we're going to slope that roof. It's about halfway up. And then slope it back down. Okay, do you have the side that's in the shadow? We want to check that angle. Oh, I'm always doing that with my pencil. Hmm, this looks like it angles more. Looks a little flatter. That side looks a little flatter too. All right, and how about that back side? Are they about parallel? So if, but this front side is um, including a little extra piece over here. So this roof comes down, but it, it's, there's a, a little extra there. So notice that um, when we drew this side over here, we were drawing it all the way over to the edge. But there's a section of the, the main portion of this building doesn't go all the way to the end. So come back just a little bit, make a little square at the end. And this is where, this is where your roof starts. Now, can you make it parallel to the other slope? All right, pretty good. Now let's do the same thing that we did with these roofs. Take them out a level just a little and take this one at a level just a little. Start from this point, come down, there's our roof. What this does, by sloping these a little, it, it really helps to give that impression that you're looking up at them. They're getting smaller over here. It's up on, on top of a hill and you're, you're down below. Um, so about halfway in here is a little bitty window, pretty narrow compared to the rest. Over here, there are a couple little doors and windows, and they're going to be there. You see how they're in the shadow, so they're not going to be quite as important, but you can block them out. All right, <laughs> not bad for blocking out the two buildings. This picket fence that's around here, and it's it's around that concrete sort of pond that collects the rainwater and drains it into a cistern, and it was probably originally around a little a sweet little vegetable garden, but because water was such an issue, they, they created that collection pond. 
but the picket fence really adds to our composition. So let's just draw some lines around and we're gonna, we'll get to drawing in the pickets as a final touch. But I, I'd like us to draw a line. We've already got the first one here. It's at the bottom of this building. And just take it across a little bit past. Okay, it doesn't go all the way to the edge of um, the assistant's house. So then there's another line that slopes down gently, and it's gonna go a little bit past, a little bit past the second house. It's a hardly noticeable slope. Okay, this front top of the picket fence is gonna come back to just past the edge of the lighthouse. When I draw it, I've inadvertently given it too much slope. I'm going to encourage you to not worry about that. Um, it shows that the ground is sloping down. Okay, then just another line in front of it, a little bit lower, and there we have it. Halfway up this fence, let's draw some... A little bit too, too low, I'm going to make it a little higher. That's the rest of the hillside over here the rest of the hillside. We can draw in bushes if we want. Make some little blobby circles. You might see some... Well, it's like there's some plants growing inside here. All right. This is, but you're probably noticing if you've, if you sketch with us a lot, this is one of the smaller sketches. And the reason I like that is because so much of this uh, building is about the surroundings. It's a tiny little lighthouse, as all lighthouses are or were in those days. So it's, it's about the whole picture. There's so much sky. There's so much hill. And in this wonderful picture, there's all those daisies. If you want, you can draw in the flagpole. It's, um, find out where it is. It goes just a little bit top of that, a little bit above that chimney. It almost looks like it's a pole on a pole. About halfway up, there's a second pole and a little bar. It looks like the, the bar of it is not quite up to there, which, which tells us something. See how I checked this to see where that bar goes? Like, well, it's not looking right. And what it is, is I've got the back of my roof, I think I've got it a little too low. Adjust if you want to, leave your original sketch if you want to. The character is there. And then we have the American flag. Waving in the breeze. This looks like it's lufting in the breeze, but you can draw it the way you want and we can make it wave. If there's any other things you want to add at this point, uh, go ahead and adjust. One of the things that you notice if you're, if you were able to print your photo in a larger size than what I've got, or if you're looking at it from the computer, is the windows that they used were called double hung, which means that they'd be broken into two right in the hat, right in the middle, like that. This is way too much detail, but this is just, if your drawing were any bigger, there it's called a six over six window. It means there's six window panes on the top and six window panes on the bottom. I don't think we should get into that much detail for now. The next step is to ink in the lines and to add the shadow. So we start with the, the shapes and the lines and shapes. And then we go back in and we add detail and tonal value. It's not a bad idea if you want to, to lighten up your pencil lines a little, especially where we drew over a couple of times. I like to start with the pen where I, in the same way that I, I, I did the pencil. So we'd start with the face of the building. And there might be two lines for the edge of the roof. These days, they've got so much sort of plaster and paint over that old sandstone wall that they look pretty smooth. 
if it were still a stand, sandstone wall, we probably would have um, broken up our lines a little. You can make your lines go fast if you want so that not too much ink collects or go slow and then you get a little pooling where the lines come together and that adds a little character. So in any way you want, you can, you can fill in what you've drawn. Then you've got the curve for the lighthouse tower. If your lines aren't exact, that's fine. It gives the drawing some, gives your sketch some character. It's a looseness and a playfulness. These were serious buildings if you were a sailor, if you were a seaman out to sea and needing to see it. But they're fun buildings now. And so historic and interesting to, to study. You might see a little bit, maybe some dash lines of what you can see inside of that big window area. Be careful about not too much ink in that area because it's see-through, it's glass. Maybe just a flick of your pen. Now there's some little vertical lines. Again, they can be just a flick of your pen to show the railing, the safety railing around there. And then how about the windows and the door? Sometimes, you know, looking at it like this, I'll do two lines around the top and two lines on the side because I can see the edge there I'm looking up at it. And then a single line for the two sides that are closer to us because we don't see the side. All right, I think that's enough for the house. So we're gonna we're going to add the lines and the shapes and then let's go back in and add the textures. I personally think it would be cool to spend the night or spend the weekend at a lighthouse. I know, no comforts of home and we're all wondering where the bathrooms were. Even on the tours, I don't know that they ever say where the bathrooms are. And there we have that. So then, um, making just dashed lines around your picket fence, follow where you're your lines were for the top of the picket fence. And then you can make a wavy line, broken up wavy line for the bottom of the picket fence, because actually those are bushes that you're drawing. And those cute little flowers. So what we're going to do with our little pickets is to not get too exact. And actually, I may just start them, but I'm, I may I may decide not to finish them just yet. I'm going to go back in and add some tonal values and some special shading around the curved form. So using uh, your pen, just do some diagonal lines to show the shadow on that side of the building, and the same for this side of that second house. All one direction is, is good, though they don't have to be parallel, they can, uh, they can waver a little. The windows really do look colored in, so, so go ahead and shade in the windows. 
Same with these. Again, I, I can sort of see, and, and maybe you can see them too, that there are some grids in the window. So, so if you wanted to, maybe that's how you shade them. There'll always be a darker side in the reflections on the window and a lighter side. I mean, this is gonna be dark because when the photo was, was taken, and pretty much any time that the lighthouse is open for tours, the door is open. So it might show up a little darker. All right. So cute. The next thing is just some texture on the roof. It looks like I know that the roof was originally tin, though isn't it interesting how it looks like it's a shingle roof? I've actually got shingles on it. And that's not original. <laughs> I know a few historians who wouldn't have been happy about that. But what I'd like us to do is just make some sort of broken lines that follow uh, the line of the top of the roof. And include that little portion there at the end, too. If you want, you can make one, one edge of it a little darker or stand back and decide, I think the roof ought to be darker still. It is one of the darkest things we're looking at. Then if you want, you can make some vertical lines for the fences. You might sort of see what's in there. Just your little pickets are just something like that. You don't have to be regular. I'm leaving a few of these out because I think I will go in and draw on some of the shrubs, which are just scribble lines. And the leaves are, are roundish, and so I'm making some roundish shapes. Things if I pull, and then a little crossbar, a wavy flag, usually a ball on top of the flagpole. What else do we need? Oh, yes. All right. Now, to show that this is a curved form instead of a square form. I don't know if you can see it, but there is an interesting shape where that shadow follows around. If you draw this in, just do it as a dashed line. Follows around. It's longer the farther back it gets and then kind of curves up like that. And it really makes your, your, your building turn. Give it a few minutes to, to, for the ink to dry, and then let's go in and erase some of the erase some of the pencil lines. Erase some of the pencil lines. It's kind of fun to see the pencil lines go. Because your ink lines really stand out. Okay. 
Now we can leave our sweet little sketch just like this, or we can do what we often do, which is to put a rectangle around it. It's kind of fun if, because we're sort of asymmetrical here to let some of the lines sort of bleed out. All right, where were we? Old Point Loma Lighthouse. It's the Cabrillo National Monument. Cabrillo National Monument. End of January, 2022. You can see that I've added a little more detail to the hill and I encourage you to do so. More squiggly lines will really help give contrast to and give punch to the hill and let the fence be lighter. So the contrast gives shape to the drawing. If you'd like to add some blue sky, you could add some blue sky. Let's see a few more pencil lines. Some other things that you could do if you don't want to color it in or you just you want to give it the effect that there's sky, some loopy lines. Certainly there'll be some seagulls. Probably even some pelicans. And if you're up for it, grab a blue pencil, color in the sky. That's a lot of blue. This is probably one of those times where you're going to wish that you had made your rectangle a little smaller. But again, because you're looking up and because that building is so white now, makes the blue kind of be a really good add, a good addition to your sketch. say the life out in the lighthouse it would have been a very boring life. Not much to do. Certainly they didn't have televisions. But what do you think? Do you think it would be interesting living the life of a lighthouse keeper? That addition to the blue is good. Especially, oops, it's coming out. Especially if you can get it nice and sort of dark blue. The original roof was made of tin, which means that on a good rainy day, it must have been so loud inside. The metal roof. Um, the rain's going to hit a metal roof and just might have drawn, dr driven the lighthouse keeper crazy because the rain would have been so loud, but I think it really sounded cool. Getting some darker blue around the shapes really makes them pop and stand out. Almost done. One thing you can do with your blue is if you wanted to emphasize the building, 
maybe that's where more blue is. Rather than, I mean, one a uniform background of blue is very attractive, but to emphasize a little punch of blue around to, around the building itself gives it a little more emphasis. Like the importance of is the building. I think I can get some of that blue off that on the white. Thank you. 